Welcome back and commodities in a portfolio is a question or uh, rather a debate that we have seen going on raging rather across global markets with the way the commodity prices have been moving and with the way the funds really are making a killing in sense of returns there as well. So this one is to you Vikram. I do understand as, as Lakshmi also said that gold and silver is perhaps we are at right now and that also just about uh, on the surface, there are various whole hosts of commodities. I mean, international markets are making a killing when it comes to cocoa, which is at all-time highs, or a coffee, which is trading at an 18-month highs, or a corn or a palm oil. I mean, wh where is India when it when it comes to all of these price moves? So uh, let me tell you how the you know uh, the introduction of gold and silver ETFs has affected the domestic uh, commodity markets. So today, you know, we don't have a spot exchange as far as gold and silver is concerned. So uh, gold and silver ETFs have become a proxy spot for uh, the Indian market, the listed spot. Otherwise, rest all the spot prices, whether from the exchange or from the you know various association, it's a derived price. But here is a here is a you know security which gives you the perfect spot price uh, as far as the Indian market is concerned. Also, you know instead of you know uh, buying gold and silver bar and shoving it under your mattress, they remain in the financial market which provide the liquidity and they can be utilized for you know a lot of stuff which you cannot do with uh, gold and silver offline so i think this is this is one thing which is underappreciated as far as the gold and silver etfs are concerned it's its contribution to the local market in terms of liquidity and everything else so i think once once we have similar products in other commodities whether it is energy or softs it will have a it will have a you know significant impact on the local liquidity and also it will result in the cost going down and maybe you know uh, even if, even if you don't have a spot pr price you know these ETFs can act as a uh, you know proxy for the uh, genuine spot prices in india mm. so i think that is something which needs to be done for these things to take up otherwise you know if you only have futures and options which will have uh, you know today 90% of the liquidity in all exchanges and derivative is through algo trading which is not uh, de you know dependent upon any sort of fundamentals so you know you need uh, physically backed products which you know sort of provide the real story the real picture of the market Hmm. Vikram, uh, very well said. Uh, and But you know, when you look at the Indian markets itself, we have our futures and options, yes. Uh, and then we have ETFs and funds as well coming in. But it took a very long time for gold to just get, uh, get in there. Silver has taken another few years and now we have that as well. How soon, how much before we get metals, energy and all of these softs? Would you say it's, it's a very, very slow process with what we're going through? I think we, as a fraternity, uh, the investment fraternity from the fund side, I think we are equally responsible for the slow of, you know, uh, process because, uh, you know, these things have to be driven at the, uh, you know, at the association levels. So unless there is a thrust, I mean, you have to understand, appreciate the regulator has been uh, fairly brave enough to approve commodities in mutual fund three, three four years back. Uh, considering what happened in the commodities not too long uh, before that. Mm. So I think uh, it's it's really appreciable what SEBI has done despite, you know, all the apprehensions. And obviously the fund houses have done a good job in, you know, uh, living up to the expectation in terms of safety, security, liquidity, etc. But I think in a way, uh, you know, right now it is not a focus. As Lakshmi uh, mentioned that, you know, we are an, still an equity uh, driven uh, market but i think I, I always believe you know fix the roof before it starts leaking so mm. you know if you want to double your size of the economy uh in, well in percentage terms the commodity consumption may not skyrocket but in absolute terms you know it will be some gigantic numbers i mean today you're consuming five million barrels of oils per oil per day 800 900 tons of uh, gold uh, sorry uh, five, uh, 900 tons of gold uh, annually so if the economy size doubles, well, the 5 million will not become 10 million, but we're looking at somewhere around 7 or 8 million barrels per day of oil, 200 tons of gold. So it may not show up as a higher number in the current account deficit, but it will be very, very high in absolute terms. And it is not easy to find those commodities on tap. So I think this is a time where, you know, uh, whether it is a regulator or the associations and the various you know, stakeholders to get together and plan a roadmap so that in the next 5, 10 years, when we are there, uh, you know, uh, you know, we don't have to, you know, sort of uh, uh, look for clues what to do at that at that point of time. Hmm. Lakshmi, what's your sense also on what really needs to be done? One and second is uh, with whatever commodities that are available right now with the funds, how much of that uh, should be a part of your portfolio? 
So Manisha, to your first part of the question, Rome was not built in a day. Uh, you know, it took it took really a long time to get gold and silver uh, into the country into the ETF format. And obviously, uh, uh, precious metals is something which even the retail investor understands. Uh, whereas, if you talk about the other commodities, specifically the energy pack, which is largely crude oil, or for that matter, base metals, uh, it's predominantly uh, understood by the institutional investor and maybe traded. Uh, if, if possible, by the retail investor as well. So I think um, uh, making some of these uh, in a basket format uh, available could be a starting point. And, and I think it's a happy uh, add-on to have as part of the portfolio. Uh, but as I said, uh, to, and, and that uh, ties into your second part of the question, how much of these kind of um, funds or categories can one have into the portfolio? Well, I'd still maintain that these are all complementary, uh, you know, uh, add-ons to your portfolio. Can it be the core? So uh, very unlikely given the cyclicality of each of these commodities at varying times and points. You're seeing gold rally today, but has it always been the case? Well, answer is no. So I think focus on core wealth creation, which is predominantly done through equities, have stability through fixed income. But definitely there are opportunistic, uh, you know, options available through commodities. And one should definitely look to harness that, especially in times like these, where uh, almost every commodity is shining. Mm. Lakshmi, let me put this question another way as well. Would you call commodities a good diversifier in a portfolio? Most certainly. Definitely, yes. Uh, it is a diversifier to your portfolio. Be mindful of the risks for sure because some of them just kind of jump into a bandwagon without understanding the risk. But certainly, diversity, it does offer. Mm. You know, uh, when you talk about equities, and yes, we lean way too much onto that, but when it comes to gold versus the gold companies, whether it's gold loan companies or jewelry companies, we do see a lot of interest into that one. Do you also see in some sense as we move forward from here, of people understanding more of the underlying commodities because yes, whether it's a tire company or a sugar company, there is an underlying commodity there and there should be arbitrage opportunities available for that. Would you say we're getting there? They will have no choice, Manisha, but to be able to understand the underlying asset class rather than just purely chasing momentum. Uh, well, uh, AI is doing its bit. Uh, but apart from that, you have to apply your own IQ and EQ when you are making these kind of investments. Uh, are we yet there? Well, the honest answer is no. But are we uh, intending to get there? The answer is yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Vikram, this one is to you. So, well, gold is done and so is silver now. What is the kind of growth would you say we've seen in the last couple of years, especially now in the last couple of months where the prices have been uh, anything but skyrocketing? So, uh, Manisha, if you allow me, I'll disagree with what Lakshmi says. And I think that is the problem with the uh, development of this market in, in India. Because, you know, when you are touting gold returns with equity returns and debt returns, it clearly shows that, you know, it is some sort of a uh, confusion you're creating in the mind of the investors. I mean, there, there are three different classes. I mean, who compares uh, the returns of debt with equities? Why are we comparing debt of, uh, you know, returns of commodity with equity? Why why it is being done? So I think that is the biggest problem, the mindset issue that we have and that needs to be resolved uh, as far as the development of the Indian market. Secondly, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, development of the gold market is concerned, uh, you know, um, what we have seen that in a country which imports roughly about two and a half, three lakh crores worth of gold, the AUM is not even 10% of that. So I think from here it can go even higher. And as the, you know, the size of the portfolios increases, there will be greater demand for portfolio diversification. And I think that could be a story which will give traction to, uh, you know, a higher participation of investors and funds in the gold market. So that's how I see it in the future. Hmm. So Vikram, uh, according to you, how much should one's portfolio be commodities right now? I mean, I know we have very limited choices here, gold and silver perhaps, but how much of holding of that? So I think if your portfolio is skewed towards fixed income, then you don't need too much of gold. Hmm. Uh, if, you, if your portfolio is skewed towards equity, then you need a higher allocation to gold. And uh, I think um, when there, there was a study done by World World Council, which mentioned that anywhere between 5 to 15%, Anything above or below that is suboptimal. So that is the range that you have depending upon where the skew of your portfolio lies. Lakshmi, what would you say? I mean, I, even if gold is a replacer in debt as a segment, how much would you want or advise holding gold? 
I would say about uh, 10 to 15 percent of your total 100 rupee allocation uh, in a portfolio, I think, is fairly optimal, though globally there are studies uh, which don't really give you uh, the precise number uh, that that kind of, uh, you know, fits best. But I, th I think anything around this range uh, should be fairly appropriate. Uh, and then this is excluding uh, the amount of, uh, you know, uh, the tons of other kind of gold uh, in the non-investment format that one already takes tends to own. So I think uh, therefore that around the 10, 15 number, uh, percent number, I think is a fairly sweet spot uh, to let your portfolio be truly diversified. All right. So if you want your portfolio truly diversified, commodities or debt perhaps is the way to go for that. And within this as well, with the kind of run-up that we've seen in commodities, even if it's for a near term or a shorter term, it does find place in your portfolio. Lakshmi Vikram, thank you so much for joining us today and taking us through all those details and, of course, what needs to be done going forward uh, with the kind of uh, movement that India is seeing in sense of financialization. Commodities perhaps will have a bigger role to play. But with that, that's all the time that we have on Commodity Champions. Thank you for watching.